parts are clear. The, the uh, Ames Center, which was so, has been already a major success in Cape Town, is reproducing itself and spreading um, to other centers throughout Africa. Uh, but, I mean, one of the, the nicest, the most attractive and successful parts of Ames is that um, it, it attempts to be continuously innovative and creative and uh, is not rigidly defined. So um, my feeling is, uh, knowing some of the people involved, and certainly Neil, that um, they have no idea what it's going to look like in five years, and, and it will be invented as one goes along, uh, taking advantage of opportunities and uh, support. And, and I think that's actually the way it should be. Um, even the most successful of all organizations you know, are great at the beginning, and they flourish, and then they plateau, and then they decline. Ames uh, seems to have a kind of energy built into it that um, might defy that usual trajectory for quite a while. And I, I'm going to very curious as to see some of the projects that will that people aren't yet even haven't even yet formulated today, but will surely develop. Many of the problems that Africa is going through are problems that all other countries or many other countries have gone through, and uh, especially those of economic development. But there are shortcuts. I mean, we don't, Africa doesn't have to repeat a lot of the mistakes of, that were made in, in the rest of the world when they develop. But uh, you know, dealing with uh, a rapidly increasing population uh, and, and standard of living uh, are obviously the essential problems that face Africa at the moment, taking advantage of its resources, both human and natural, and avoiding some of the problems that the rest of the world has, um, is now encountering very heavily as they went around solving those initial problems. You can bypass a lot of it. So, I mean, for example, in communication, which I think is probably uh, the easiest thing to latch on to. Uh, you don't have to invent a telephone system, you have mobiles. And, um, and that can be introduced into a country in, in the span of a few years. Many other uh, modern technologies allow you to rapidly uh, arrive at... Uh, and another thing is you don't have to go through all the stages of the Industrial Revolution and the 20th century in order to arrive to, uh, to serve your population, you can find uh, better ways of doing it, given the, today's technology and knowing yesterday's mistakes. One problem that hasn't yet, f I mean, uh, a good friend of mine at very high up in the Chinese leadership once told me how disappointed he was that the Chinese, who had the opportunity 30 years ago not to follow the West and invent a system of transportation that wouldn't rely on automobiles and uh, missed the opportunity and now they're faced with pollution that is immobilizing their cities. Africa, for example, has an opportunity as it develops and it's far from having to face that problem immediately of not going through the, the automobile solution to uh, urbanization. But we'll see. It, it's enormously liberating and exciting to be in on the beginning of solving some incredible problems and, and serving your country and your people and the world. And, and one should always, as Ames has done, I mean, one of the most, that's one of its most remarkable characteristics. It keeps it accounts for that feeling that you describe in the Ames building, you know, this feeling of, of being open to new, new ways of doing things and flexible and oppor opportunistic. Um, and yeah, those qualities I would definitely, it's one of the, you know, I think the most important things that you can, that science brings to you uh, as an educational uh, 
lesson to think anew. Every yesterday's solutions are probably flawed, and there there is always a, a new angle or a new way of thinking. And just because that's the way you were taught, or or the way it's written in books, doesn't mean it's the right way or the best way. So continually create.